Hey everyone, in the news this week, a batch of more Jeffrey Epstein names was released and included magician David Copperfield, which maybe explains how somebody got in and out of the jail cell undetected. North Korea has stated that Kim Jong-un is now 40, although I'm not sure if that means years or a stone. And Sven Goran Eriksson has announced that he's got cancer and only has a few months to live. I'm not sure if the doctor announced it by telling him he'd reached the knockout stage, but I'm imagining that Michael Owen, Wayne Rooney and the rest of that squad of players will all be asked to lower his casket at the funeral so they can let him down one more time. And there was a story about the tabloids about the last moments of the Queen's life being painless, which I guess would have been a welcome relax from the previous nine decades of toil and brutal hard labour. Oh wait, no she didn't. But anyway, probably the largest story of the last week was the developments in the post office computer scandal after the government announced new laws to quickly exonerate and compensate victims. More than 900 postmasters were wrongly prosecuted between 1999 and 2015 after being falsely accused of stealing huge sums of money with only 93 convictions ever being overturned. Innocent people went to jail, people were declared bank Corrupt marriages were destroyed and several of those people committed suicide. It's worth noting that all three major parties were deeply involved in this. Labour purchased and introduced the bad software. The Conservatives and the Lib Dems both oversaw failings and a cover-up. In fact, one of the more shocking aspects of all this is that for all the incompetence, deceit and nefarious things going on, the SNP weren't also involved and Mark Drakeford was miles away at the time. Ed Davey, the leader of the Lib Dems, was the post office minister at the time that most of this was going on and there's a truly astonishing interview from a few days ago where he repeatedly weasels out of saying the word sorry in a manner that's remarkably reminiscent of the old Michael Howard interview. It's genuinely worth looking up if you've not seen it. He's also refused to resign as party leader, which is surprising given that demanding people's resignation is all the Lib Dems really do these days. Also of interest is the fact that it turns out that the legal firm the post office hired was paying Davey £5,000 a month recently. Not so much the gravy train as the Davey train. Compare and contrast to Paula Venels, who was the post office CEO for seven years and has since announced that she's going to be returning her CBE, though hopefully she's not posting it back to the king. Anyway, as I said, the government's putting forward some new post office legislation, although the government might want to be very careful this time when they passed the Stamp Act back in 1765. Things went very badly wrong. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.